Boom! Shake the room, Fire Nation. JLD here with an audio masterclass on putting your best foot forward. To drop these value bombs, I have brought Mary Kyle on the mic. She is a senior technology recruiter at First National Bank of Omaha, where she leads efforts for technology hiring strategy, recruiting, and coaching students. I've also brought Marty Cordero on the mic. He is the president of Omaha Storm Chasers in Union, Omaha. He was previously the Baseball America Minor League Executive of the Year and PCL Executive of the Year. And Fire Nation, today we're talking about networking and the best strategies, even when you have little to no experience. We're going to talk about being overwhelmed when it comes to over committing and how you can avoid that and how you can differentiate yourself in today's difficult and competitive markets. And Fire Nation will be dropping a lot of other value bombs as soon as we get back from thanking our sponsors. If you have a world-class business education in mind for your high school students, then you should have Hyder College of Business at Creighton University in mind too. To experience Hyder, go to business.creighton.edu. Looking for a business coach who has helped thousands of entrepreneurs just like you to increase their profitability by an average of 104% per year, all for less money than it would cost to hire a full-time minimum wage employee? Schedule your free consultation today with Clay Clark at thrivetimeshow.com slash fire. Thrivetimeshow.com slash fire. Mary, Marty, say what's up to Fire Nation. And Mary, let's start with you because I know you have something interesting to share about yourself that most people don't know. Yes, John, thanks for the invite today. It's funny, in the emails I received in preparation, there was a mention of be ready to share something that no one knows about you. So I kind of sweated that out a little bit today (laughs) and um, (laughs) came up with something that most folks don't know. In fact, I'm not even sure my husband knows. But um, gosh, right out of high school, I was um, doing some traveling and having a really good time. And I actually was on a couple of talk shows. So like back in 1993, I was on Ricky Lake and I was on Geraldo. Those were like the two biggest shows in the early 90s. Like how does your husband not know about this? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was dating, I think the shows, the, the topics were like girls that like bad boys and, oh, and you know, no, bad boys and now. the girls that love, you know, that kind of just <laughs> ridiculousness. So, um, you know, certainly have grown since then. I'm not a fan of bad boys anymore, but um, yeah, those were, you know, even pre like Jerry Springer days. It's so funny you bring up Jerry Springer because when you were talking about that, that brought up my memories of my spring break in 2002. When I was a junior in college, I was on Springer break in um, Jamaica. It was a crazy experience. I don't talk about it much either for obvious reasons, but uh, talk shows, yep, those are one thing that, uh, you know, those things can stay in the past because today's episode, Fire Nation, is about putting your best foot forward. That's forward, not backward or in the past. And I want to stay with you, Mary, right now, and I want to hear about when you first started your career. What was your dream job and how did you brand yourself? So it's interesting. I don't know that early on I had a dream job. Um, I was very people oriented and sales and doing technology. So I was able to kind of fall into a role with AT&T and did some large enterprise telecom sales for them. And then from there, uh, through technology and relationships, um, just kind of happenstance got into technical recruiting. And it was like the perfect blend of relationships, sales, um, and technology. So it just all kind of came together. And it's interesting because as my kids are, you know, finishing high school and in college, that's the advice I give them. Like, figure out what you're passionate about and just start investigating different opportunities in that space. Now, Marty, back in the day, you had a dream job. What was that dream job and how did you brand yourself in order to get your first foot in that door? (laughs) Well, I think I had several dream jobs. Uh, So it's hard to pigeonhole one. And for a while, I wanted to be a rock musician, which I did play drums professionally for a number of years. Oh, wow. 
I, I also wanted to be a major league general manager uh, because I grew, I played baseball growing up. I played through high school and I was going to be a baseball coach. Uh, so I would say that neither of my dream jobs uh, really have a lot to do with what I do now. Uh, but, you know, what I'm doing now as president of, of two professional sports organizations, one, the AAA uh, affiliate for the Kansas City Royals, the Omaha Storm Chasers, and the other is an independent professional soccer team called Union Omaha. Uh, those are dream jobs that, as I got into professional sports in 1999, uh, those those were jobs that I could envision myself getting to. I just never, you, know, you never know how long it's going to take or where it's going to, what path it's going to be, which we went around the country as in my family and myself, but uh, a lot of different things. Marty, I want to stay with you here because it just seems to me with all that you've accomplished and, you know, the jobs that you've acquired and the fact that, you know, that you were the Baseball America Minor League Executive of the Year as well as the PCL Executive of the Year. I mean, you must be pretty good at networking and it's super important to be able to network, but it freaks a lot of people out. So for those people that are listening, like what advice would you have for people who are nervous when they're trying to network, mostly just due to lack of experience? What would you say to them? I'm somewhat of a nervous networker, believe it or not. Um, if there's a room full of people, uh, I have salespeople on our staff that can go in and just, uh, they, they, they get business cards, they get connections, you know, they make connections on LinkedIn, whatever it may be. Myself, I'm much more relationship-based and working with the existing relationships and partners that I have to then network amongst others. So those are two different ways to go about it. And my suggestion always to our staff, whether they're in sales or not, everybody in professional sports, especially at the minor league level, is a salesperson. Even our CFO, you know, even the person uh, you know, that, is, that, is, that is doing the invoices. So I always tell people, you know, be a celebrity of influence in your sphere uh, and, and, and the, in the world that you live in. Uh, so for me is find what you're comfortable with building relationships and how you're, you're comfortable with that and, and go forth that way. But don't sit in the corner, don't sit behind a desk and wonder who's going to be my next relationship or who's going to be my next contact. You do have to make it happen. So I love that phrase, Fire Nation, be a celebrity of influence in your sphere. Like don't get overwhelmed and stressed out. You need to be the celebrity of influence everywhere. This is in your sphere, whatever that niche or vertical that you are actually in. So Mary, same question to you. What would you add to what Marty just shared? The first thing I would say is people do feel nervous with things that are new or maybe it's out of their kind of comfort zone. In embrace that. Everyone is nervous about different things. I'm nervous sometimes when I'm in a room or speaking with, with folks that I haven't spoken to. Use that to your advantage. Challenge yourself. Um, ask people to help you with introductions to, um, to meet people within different organizations or at events, but embrace it. Embrace it. Know that it's natural. It's normal. Everyone has some nervous energy and just push yourself. Now, I want to stay with you for this next question here, Mary, because literally being overwhelmed is common. I mean, people are overwhelmed. They're stressed out. There's so many things going on. And when we're talking to students, you know, they have to divide their time with classes, with commitments, with leadership roles, with internships. How do they do all of these things? Like, what would you recommend to today's students that are really looking to kind of get pieces of all of these pies, but not overcommit, not become overwhelmed. What would your recommendation be? I would map out a plan, maybe over 12 or 24 months, so that you can focus on what you want to accomplish during that time, and then kind of parse that out. Because you can't be in Toastmasters, have an internship, have a part-time job, be on a committee, you know, and be a full-time student. So determine what is a priority, and go after that and then make sure that that kind of time commitment measures up with the expectations of that group or that internship and so on. And be ready to say, hey, the timing's off. Can we reconnect, you know, next semester or, you know, do you have any opportunities available during the summer? So I think the, the big and most important thing is you don't have to say yes to everything, but decide what your priorities are, map out a plan, follow the plan and, and ask for help. 
I love that idea of prioritizing Fire Nation. It's so critical. And there's a phrase that I actually do live by is that when you say yes to one thing, you're saying no to everything else that you could possibly be doing while you're doing whatever it is that yes was. So think about that. That makes every more yes that much more important, that much more valuable. And you're going to prioritize and say yes to what matters. And you have to say no to what doesn't. Because if it's not a heck yes, it's a no. It has to be in today's world. So Marty, what would you add to this? I agree. I mean, be intentional with what you're doing. You know, be in or out, uh, whether it's um, prospective entrance into our world of professional sports, staff members that we have here. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's something that's uh, critically, it's critically important to make sure that you're intentional with what, with what you're doing, because you're right. If you say, if you say no to something, that means you're saying yes, and you need to be all into what you're saying yes. Fire Nation, wise words from wise individuals. And if you think these value bombs are even close to being done, you have another thing coming. After the break, watch out, more value headed your way. If you have a student in high school, then chances are you're already thinking about college. And if you have a world-class business education in mind, then I'm excited to tell you about the Hyder College of Business at Creighton University. Hyder is a true innovator with business education for a changing world. They offer a customizable curriculum tailored to each individual student's personal and professional interests, including innovative majors like fintech and business intelligence and analytics. They also offer unique tracks and specializations like social entrepreneurship and pre-health science. Science. Plus, Hyder offers unique hands-on learning opportunities like the Creighton Business Symposium, the largest student-run business conference in the country. In fact, the Creighton Business Symposium students are responsible for coordinating the thought leaders and content you are listening to today. With a 99% success rate, meaning 99% of Hyder students are employed or accepted into graduate or professional school within six months of graduation, and faculty experts who bring their real-world business experience into the classroom every single day, Hyder is here to help your students succeed. To Experience Hyder, go to business.creighton.edu. That's business.creighton.edu. Looking for a business coach who has helped thousands of entrepreneurs just like you to increase their profitability by an average of 104% per year, all for less money than it would cost to hire a full time minimum wage employee? Fire Nation, meet Clay Clark. Clay has been coaching businesses just like yours since 2006. Yep, even through the Great Recession. And he does it for less money than it would cost to hire a full-time minimum wage employee. At a time when Inc. Magazine reports that by default, 96% of businesses will fail within 10 years, Clay is helping businesses like yours to grow on average by 104% annually. You might be wondering, how's this even possible? Well, Clay only takes on 160 clients, which means means he's able to personally design your business plan. Plus, Clay's team helps you execute that plan with access to graphic designers, Google certified search engine optimizers, web developers, online advertising managers, videographers, workflow mappers, and accounting coaches to help you get on top of your numbers. Visit thrivetimeshow.com slash fire to see thousands of video testimonials from real clients who Clay has helped over the years. Then schedule your free consultation with Clay himself to see how he and his team can help you thrive. That's thrivetimeshow.com slash fire. Mary, Marty, we are back and I want to stay with you here, Marty. You're kind of on a roll right now. And I think this is a great question for you because again, you are the Baseball America Minor League Executive of the Year, PCL Executive of the Year. You don't get those awards. You don't achieve those achievements without differentiating yourself. And it's a competitive market out there. I mean, it doesn't matter what niche, what industry, what vertical you're in. We're talking there's competition, especially when the prize is worthy. So how can people differentiate themselves in today's competitive market? And you could even maybe move forward with this, Marty, a little bit and share some things that you look for when you're hiring people and, and ways that you've seen them successfully differentiate themselves. We look for people that have already done some community service, uh, people that have a passion. And that could be something that's personal and close to you, whether you have had your family has had uh, some social uh, issues or you've had health issues in your family, or it's just been something, whether it's high school or college, that you have uh, become engaged in in the community uh, from a not-for-profit perspective. So that's something that we do look for uh, because that that shows a sense of community pride, empathy, sympathy, all of the words. And I think that that does separate out because sometimes when we're looking for internships, 
uh, or sometimes when we're doing internships, that's all that we're focusing on. We're not really wide scoping at all. We look for people that have maybe not had direct sales experience, but have they had customer service experience? Have they worked a cash register somewhere uh, at a university? You know, did they get experience in their athletic department or their theater department's box office selling tickets? Is something as basic as that? Those those interactions uh, really matter when you're talking about someone who can a carry on a conversation, which hopefully is going to lead uh, to developing a relationship. So when Marty was talking Fire Nation, something that came up for me is why wouldn't you? look into the core values of the business that you're interested in applying to. Like if you did that for Marty, you'd find out, hey, they put a high value on customer service. So maybe you emphasize that and really make sure to bring that up. Hey, they put a high value on volunteering in your community and community service. Why don't you highlight that or make sure that you're padding your stats, so to speak, in that area. So some great feedback there from Marty. Mary, what are your thoughts? Personal branding is so important. And that branding starts in college with your reputation, how your peers perceive you, your professors, any um, academic achievements, volunteering, and so on. So work on that personal brand. And remember that every interaction you have, whether it's positive or negative, will impact your personal brand. Um, To Marty's point, community service, volunteering, uh, really showing your character and giving of yourself is very important. That is something that will stand out on a resume and reflect uh, your character. So build your personal brand, keep it in mind, have integrity, um, and go wide. Go wide with your network. So Mary, let's talk about your school experience. I mean, I know if you're like me, that was decades ago. I mean, it's been a while since I've been in school, but I can still look back and I can just think of some skills that I picked up during my college experience, you know, during my time at Providence College in Rhode Island that's helped me time and time again as I've gone forward in different avenues. What would you say is the most, or at least one of the most valuable skills that you learned in school that's helped you throughout your career? Great question. Really two things pop up. First is being able to become more involved in campus life outside of just the classes. So again, the volunteering, I was in a sorority, I helped with different functions for games and so on. So just being able to be available, expanding my network while I was at school, um, and then also getting involved in Toastmasters. Toastmasters is a tremendous organization to help people with public speaking. And I find that most folks don't really get excited about public speaking or about maybe becoming involved in a group like Toastmasters, it is time so well spent, and it's a great way to invest in yourself and also invest in your skills. There's almost no meaningful job that will not be enhanced, Fire Nation, by being a better speaker, by being a better communicator, by being comfortable talking and presenting in front of other individuals. Like We all get nervous on some levels when we're in front of people speaking, But guess what? The more you do it, the more you realize that, hey, I can do this. So Marty, same question to you, a valuable, if not the most valuable skill that you learned in school that helped you throughout your career. Being able to multitask with the right things. You know, we talked earlier about, you know, when you say yes, you're saying no to a lot of things, but uh, being able to go to school, hold down a job, uh, participate in some of the things uh, that Mary mentioned earlier, uh, whether it's fraternity, sorority, whether it's intramurals or you're, maybe you're a scholarship athlete. Uh, in my case, um, when I was going through college, uh, I, was, I had a kid. It was just me and, and uh, my oldest son, now Gavin. And I had to navigate um, being a single dad, working a part-time job, going to school full-time. And then I also started my, my professional career, if you will, I worked for the baseball program at Louisiana Tech for the three years when I was finishing my marketing degree. So you don't have to be a single parent to do that. Uh, but, you know, what's important to you is the community service is, you know, is, uh, you know, is, is faith important to you is intramural sports, Toastmasters, community volunteering, so many things. Don't do them just to put them on a resume, do them to completion. So make sure you're not overloading. Uh, but when you're, you know, when you're going through that, learning how to multitask for me, 
is really what helped get me set because that's really what we do in minor league baseball. We wear so many darn hats. Um, you know, that really was a great, great uh, training ground for me. And I didn't even know that it was happening at the time. But looking back, that was absolutely number one. Marty, hindsight is twenty twenty, And knowing that, we can look back and say, oh, man, I really wish I knew this. I wish I did that. What is some specific advice that you wish you knew back when you were in college that would have really helped you when you started looking for work post-college? I think I probably would have started networking earlier. Uh, I did send out letters. uh, And those listening, yes, we used to use the post office for everything. (laughs) And I sent letters to every major league club and a lot of minor league clubs. And I, I, I would have done that earlier and I would have followed up with phone calls. It wouldn't have it would not have just been sending letters. Uh, so it would have been uh, honing my networking skills and doing it in an earlier uh, in an earlier time frame would have probably been the thing I, I would have gone back and done over. What about you, Mary? Same. I definitely would um, have started networking earlier, probably also tried to take advantage of internship opportunities. I never interned while I was in college. Every summer, I was just excited to have a few months off and not do really anything. So um, looking back, I think I missed out on some opportunities that could have helped kind of propel my career. But um, I would say internships, networking early, figure out what companies you're interested in and see um, you know, who you know that maybe works there or if your parents you know, have friends that work there and so on. But just really start kind of identifying industry companies and those sorts of things before you're out of college. So you can learn about them, follow them on, uh, online, and, and try to get a foot in the door. Marty, we're going to uh, come to you after Mary answers this final question. So definitely take your time, get prepared for it. But Mary, let's put you on the spot here for a second. You've shared a lot of knowledge. You've shared a lot of value in this interview. What's the one thing you want to make sure the listeners really walk away with from everything that you and Marty have shared? Prioritizing their personal roadmap. Prioritizing what they want to accomplish while they're in school in terms of mastering that education and also having internship opportunities or volunteer opportunities and so on. So I would say really, you know, getting out that 24 month calendar, breaking it up by semester, deciding what's important for you to get done during those semesters, and then figuring out the way to make that happen. Going back to that, knowing when to say yes to opportunities, and also knowing that uh, you're going to have to say no to some. Marty? Great minds think alike, so I, I won't be redundant. I agree with everything you said. I'm going to go way off path here. You know, we live in a polarizing time. We live in a fast food society. We want everything right now. Uh, and then when we want it, we want it our way, and we don't want anyone else to, to be able to tell us or to discuss with us, you know, how things may or may not be. So I just urge those that are out there, don't get caught up in that. Sometimes things take a little time and it's okay if it's not immediate gratification. But I think more importantly, we need to remember that we need to be able to discuss things. And I think that goes back to relationships. Right now, whether it's a, a sports team or whether it's politics or whether it's the virus, you're right or you're wrong. Well, the reality is that's not really true. There are common discussion points that we should all be having. And when you're out and when you're starting to get out in your career, you need to remember that um, because you can really find individuals um, that you can discuss things with. uh, And you don't want to get on the side of right or wrong uh, because you may be missing out on a lot of the big world that's out here. Fire Nation, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And you've been hanging out with MK, MC, and JLD today. So keep up that heat. And if you head over to eofire.com and type Mary in Marty, that's M-A-R-T-I-E, in the search bar, the show notes page will pop up with everything we talked about today. Links to them, to their companies, how you can follow up with them, and everything that we chatted about. Mary, Marty, Thank you for sharing your truth, your knowledge, your value with Fire Nation today. For that, we salute you and we'll catch you on the flip side. Thank you, John. Thanks, John.
Hey, Fire Nation, today's value bomb content was brought to you by Creighton and Mary and Marty. Are you ready to rock your very own podcast? Well, check out our free podcasting course then because I teach you how to create and launch your own podcast for free. Freepodcastcourse.com. I'll catch you there or I'll catch you on the flip side. If you have a world-class business education in mind for your high school students, then you should have Hyder College of Business at Creighton University in mind too. To experience Hyder, go to business.creighton.edu. Looking for a business coach who has helped thousands of entrepreneurs just like you to increase their profitability by an average of 104% per year, all for less money than it would cost to hire a full-time minimum wage employee? Schedule your free consultation today with Clay Clark at thrivetimeshow.com slash fire. thrivetimeshow.com slash fire.